Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Delzi, a 60-minute conversation delivering insights and best practices from industry experts and, and more importantly, your peers from around the country to be the espresso for your practice. I'm your co-host, Matt Delzingara, or Delzi for short. I see some new people who have joined us that haven't been on a sh our show, so thank you for doing that. And uh, I would like to introduce my co-host, Nicole Myers. Nicole, say hello. Hello. Thank you for having me, Matt Delzingaro. I have or the honor Delzi for short. <laughs> Delzi. Um, I have the honor of introducing our guest today, which we are so excited about. Let me give you a little bit of background about our guest, Katie Braden. She is a CFP. And here's the thing, she is bullish on the power of authentic video. She loves working with advisors to help them improve their virtual meeting setup, build confidence on camera, and use video to grow their brand, attract more of their ideal clients, and better communicate with their existing clients. She obtained her degree in photography from RMIT University in Australia. And before returning to the US and joining her mother's RIA practice, she left in 2013 to start her own um, first completely virtual subscription model financial planning business. And then that's when she pivoted to working and speaking and consulting with financial planners and doing what she does today in over 35 countries, people. So now she combines that creative side with her passion for the profession as founder and chief video officer of advisor video marketing. She served on the board's Women's Initiative Council since 2014. She's also a 2016 Investment News 40 Under 40 alum, and she often is seen speaking at or video reporting from industry conferences. Fun facts about Katie, which I would love for her if we have time to get into this a little bit, but she's also a private pilot. She loves the freedom of the skies, whether flying herself or traveling around the world with her husband, who happens to also be a professional pilot. Otherwise, she can be found at home in her Las Vegas home with her two adorable kittens, Pepper and Acorn. I love that, Katie. So thank you so much for joining us. We're really happy to have you here. You have a fascinating background. So I'm so excited with the content that you can bring to us today. Del yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Again, thank you so much for being here. Nice. So, All right. so here, so let's lay let's the work out here on how I found Katie. So Katie oh, yeah. was a referral from a colleague of both Nicole and I. We both worked with him. He's actually out in Seattle, believe it or not. Our boy, Matt D, the other Matt D. And he had her as a guest speaker on his show a few months back. And he said, Delzi, she is phenomenal. You have to have Katie. I'll go send you an email and introduce you both. And so what I want to share with you is what got me so excited about having Katie on the show as soon as possible. So let me quickly share this with you so you can see how powerful this can be in your own practice. Do you guys see that? Sorry. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Delzi, it's great to meet you. Appreciate the connection between the two of you. I just thought I'd pop in and say hi. I'm not sure what conversation you guys have had, if any, but just did a really fun webinar with Matt talking all about video for financial advisors. And we barely scratched the surface, but I think hopefully we provided some good value in there. Uh, so if you'd like to chat further, you can schedule a call uh, up here in the corner. I look forward to learning more about you, about your business, uh, if you've been using video, how you help use video, how I might be able to help you get to using video. So I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and I look forward to talking soon. So guys, how cool was that? I want you to imagine you just got an, a, ref a referral from your best client, right? And what typically happens, and we all do this, me, myself in included, is that we send off a generic intro email, right, with our firm, with a brochure, possibly a link to the website, and it's not personal. And I got to tell you, literally, I got the referral from Matt, and within about an hour, Katie was sending that video personalized. As you can see, she said my name, she thanked Matt, and I got to know who Katie was and her personality within 30 seconds. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's going to make for a great speaker. So guys, it literally, Katie, you can even start off just asking this question. I'm sorry, Nicole, for stealing is how long did it literally take to make that video? 
just the amount of time. And I'll show you guys exactly how I do it. You never leave your email. You're not logging into anything else. You're not copying and pasting anything else. All you do is hit the record button, record the video, hit done, send the email. That's it. Absolutely incredible. Listen, I feel like we just got the answer because we just watched that video. And I don't know about you, but that's way more impactful <laughs> if someone's reaching out to me the first time. But our first question, and maybe in your words, Katie, why is video so much more powerful than some of our other mediums for communication? Yeah. So Nicole, like I mentioned, I'm here at my childhood home looking in the backyard. And I was just thinking last night, I remember laying in the backyard as a kid and I'm sure you all did too. And you look up at the clouds and you're like, oh, that looks like a clown. That looks like a monster. That looks like a lion, right? We're wired to see faces everywhere in every single thing that we see. Right? We always remember the Jesus toast. It's because humans, think about how long humans have been around, right? We haven't been writing all that terribly long, definitely have not been doing audio or certainly video that long throughout human history. And we're still hardwired with a lot of that fight or flight. So we look for people's eyes. We look for their emotions, their facial reactions. And so that's what makes video more powerful than even podcasts, which I love, blogs, which I love, being on social media. But we need to see the person. And beyond just seeing them, you mentioned I have a degree in photography. So you'd think I would love the two-dimensional aspect of photography. But I always joke for anybody that has ever done online dating, right? We all see pictures. You get this whole image of somebody, not just the, the actual physical image, but you picture what their personality is, right? And then you meet them. We've all had experiences. It could be business, could be personal, whatever, where you meet the person and you're like, wow, that is not at all what I thought they were like. So video is the only medium that breaks through all of that. It is the best medium that is really the only, not replacement, but it's the next best thing to being in person. And the only caveat with that is I'll say, this is why I'm so big on easy and authentic video. So we are very specifically not talking about highly scripted, super professional video, because that you can make cookie cutter. That doesn't bring out your personality. That doesn't show who you are. And that doesn't always allow people to connect with you, right? We all see TV ads of all these big professional companies with huge budgets, right? And they're just actors. That isn't really building the connection that we want to be talking about here today. So easy, authentic video, Nikki, hands down, the best medium. So that brings up, I was going to ask something up to that nature of basically easy and authentic versus pre-scripted, very professionally done. And I got to believe that's probably the number one reason other than time, why advisors don't get into doing more video is that they think it has to be so professional, right? Well-scripted. And as you can see, Nikki and I are tripping over each other today. And this is not scripted, right? We, <laughs> we're just going I back. I we were executing. <laughs> yes, we're executing. So this doesn't have to be perfect. So what would you say that's the number one reason, Katie, that advisors think that has to be perfect? Because perfectionists, that's the, the ultimate killer, right? It is. And actually, so they might say that, but if we do a little psychology one-on-one -on -one and peel back some of those layers, Delzi, it's fear. All of it is fear because really the hardest part of video is getting comfortable on video. And one thing that can really help people that are listening is knowing even, I, I regularly work with public speakers, people that are out there on the speaking circuit, very comfortable speaking in front of huge audiences and getting them on video. The second we hit that record button, so many times people stumble over saying their own name. So I say that to say the actual skill of being comfortable on camera, it is different. It is absolutely a different skill, even from public speaking. So that's where the most effort needs to be put in is just getting comfortable. And that's what's going to allow you to way more easily make videos, be comfortable being yourself and doing that authentic part and realizing that you don't ever have to worry about a script because the only thing you should ever be talking about on video is the exact same stuff that you're answering in prospect meetings and in client meetings. And I'm pretty sure you've never stopped in the middle of a sentence in a 
client meeting and go, oh, hold on, let me retake that back to the beginning, right? You just keep going and you're going to have imperfections and you're going to stumble. But we don't fix those things in real life. So very often we really don't need to fix them in video either. But that getting comfortable part, that, that is the hardest part. And that comes down to fear. It's trying something new. Interesting. What do I think advisor's biggest stumbling blocks are or barriers to creating video are? So right. how about we throw that question out to all the people that are here? You're here. You knew we were talking about video. You're very likely interested in video. What has been the barrier for each of you in creating video? Either you're here to learn how to get started with video. What has been that barrier? Or you're looking to level up and what have been those barriers? Oh, won't you need to get compliance approval of any videos? That's a big hurdle in our industry. So you obviously work directly with advisors, so you can speak to this. Yeah, yeah totally. And here's the thing, more and more even BDs are not only allowing video, but encouraging video. And here are a couple of things to know. So first, that video that I sent you, Delzi, these video emails should be as easy as leaving a voicemail. Again, I, like I think most of us stop leaving voicemails at the end. It'll still say, oh, if you don't like it, and you want to re-record, hit one. Who? Nobody ever hits that, right? You don't ever re-record a voicemail, so you shouldn't re-record these. But this is a good way to start and talk to your compliance department and get some initial guidelines. And the thing that I always tell advisors, and I'll work with advisors and their compliance departments, we have to like really give a lot of empathy to compliance departments, right? They have a lot going on. And I will tell you, a lot of advisors will start with video. They'll work with their compliance department and then they'll just fade out and stop doing video. And so compliance departments are like, all right, we're trying to work with you. And they're like, we put all this effort in and then you stop doing video. So I always tell advisors, start with really simple videos, get those approved by compliance and build that relationship with them. And then they'll start to see you're not out there saying anything stupid, right? You're not running afoul of compliance. You're just using this as another communication medium. And again, they're not, you're not having to record every voicemail that you leave. Compliance isn't in every client meeting, right? You're having all of these interactions that aren't compliance approved. So we really are moving more towards video being understood and accepted in that matter. But start super simple. I always tell people maximum two minute videos. And I tell advisors actually record these videos because I know compliance, they're like, oh, send us the script first. No, because it's also, it's easy to send the script and then compliance comes back and they want reviews. You're never going to get anywhere with that. So I tell them to record the video because again, humans are visual. So if compliance actually sees this video and send the transcript, which is super easy to do, then that starts to build that relationship. I think that lends to Katie, like, I think you have to think about what's the intention of the video, right? And yep. I'm curious with the advisors that you work with, what blew my mind is the authenticity of this. Like, I definitely was like, oh, we're going to have a video person. I'm nervous because she's going to tell us how to make everything picture perfect. And it's the exact opposite. And it was like, wow, this opened up a yep. whole new world. And just seeing your video got my mind, my brain spinning of, oh, I could see an advisor setting a prospect. So my point is, is how many advisors that you work with are using this medium for educational purposes or what I actually see it more for is just the relationship piece. Right? Yeah, and that, and that lends into compliance because if you're just trying to connect with somebody on a human level, <laughs> not get into anything educational or product or anything, your services, does compliance become an issue? Yeah. And again, that's where you're building that relationship with compliance. So that's always where I recommend people start because it's also a lot less daunting to send. I always say start with gratitude videos, right? So we all know we've all experienced this throughout our lives when you're like, oh, I haven't talked to my best friend in three months. I should call them. Or maybe somebody that lives a mile down the road, but you always think I'll see them tomorrow, right? We always think about these people, but I encourage advisors to actually stop and take action on that. So whether it's sending a quick video to your longest standing client, totally out of the blue and just saying, hey, I just wanted you to know I'm thinking of you and I so appreciate the 22 years that we've worked together and all of the amazing goals that you've accomplished in your life, right? That will make someone's day. And so that highlights the power of these easy and authentic videos. And that makes you feel good, right? We know as humans that doing good makes you feel good. 
sending a video to a center of influence that referred a client to you or proactively reaching out to a center of influence. There are so many use cases for this of, like you just said, those touch points, right? Building relationships. And once you get comfortable with that and you see the positive reaction, like Delzi, your reaction, that is not uncommon. If you start with that, and again, compliance should be good with that. Well, I wanted to, I want to just, I think that is the biggest hurdle. I think advisors think is the compliance and Todd bringing that question. That's a great, the start place, yeah. starting place is always compliance. And I will tell you this guys, compliance is getting acclimated to social media and things like that. I will tell you yep. one of my largest broker dealers, and you guys know all of it start it has three letters. And this broker dealer now, all the advisor has to do is submit it into this. It's called patrol, I think it's called. And literally, they go through it. It's done. If they don't hear anything back, guess what? It's already approved. So yep. I have a, an advisor who I interviewed last month, right? If you guys remember Nick. Nick, I go, hey, is how much? Because he posts every day on LinkedIn. He goes, Belzy. All I have to do is post to and post it to our compliance page. And if I don't hear anything within an hour, it's approved. I don't have to wait. So guys, I'm telling you, your compliance departments are not as bad as they used to be. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, insurance companies are the worst. <laughs> yeah. Right, Nikki? So if I can get something like this approved, as long as I'm not talking about product, I'm good to go. If, as long as it's value add or whatever. And that's where you have to be careful. So you start talking with about the markets or talking about products and things like that. That's where you get into trouble. That, that was a really good point. And I just wanted to keep, to keep expanding on what are those easy first steps? Because you hit on one, the gratitude video. You're like saying yeah. these things and I'm like, immediately there's a light bulb. So I think that's genius. What are other easy steps for them to get started? Yeah. So think about all the other things that happen in a client's life, right? Even on their birthday, it only takes 30 seconds to send a personalized happy birthday message, right? And if clients are going on a cruise or they have a big family celebration, right? Putting that into there to weave that personalization. And one of the really cool things with that, that I will tell you, and I have had experiences from videos that I've sent and from advisors that I've worked with is that video gets talked about. And so picture, you send a client happy birthday message in the morning. Let's say they're out to dinner with friends or colleagues that night. Somebody else may be talking about, hey, I need an advisor or what's going on with the markets or what do we do about interest rates? And somebody's like, oh man, I just, you're going to be top of mind. They're like, I just got a really cool birthday message from my advisor. You should talk with my advisor. That's one of the things that we forget is the power of video to keep you top of mind at all times. And because that's going to stick out, the other thing I'll say is for those of you that are active on LinkedIn, we always get those, well, I guess Facebook does this too. It'll tell you, Hey, it's Delzi's birthday today, right? I love doing this on LinkedIn. So I have, I'll show you a tool, bomb bomb, the one I used to send the video to Delzi that's integrated into my LinkedIn as well. And so I'll send people personal happy birthday messages on LinkedIn. And I have so many examples of people saying, I got over a hundred, totally generic. Everybody just hits that little button that says happy birthday on LinkedIn. Like I got over a hundred messages and yours was the only one I responded to. Again, you're sticking out. So you can use this for your COIs. You can use this for your prospects. It is such an easy and incredible differentiator. And so Nikki, we're talking about what are other use cases, sending videos before a prospect meeting and as a follow-up to a prospect meeting. And I have multiple firsthand stories of advisors that have gone through my workshops that the client has actually told them that the reason they selected that advisor over other advisors that they were interviewing was because of the personalized video. That told the client that they care about personalization, they take the time, they care about the relationship, and funny enough, some of them were like, you're clearly tech savvy. And some of the advisors are like, no, I'm not, but cool. <laughs> it's all about how you make the other person feel. And these people felt cared about and respected and like it really is about the relationship that this entire business is built on. This is so cool. I, I thought it was so simple, but now I'm just like, it's now it, it, the birthdays, the thanking the business I was gonna I'm say thinking no from thanks. a personal perspective forget you guys on the call yeah. I'm as selfish as anyone I'm like how am I going to use this no but it yeah. also says I did try bomb guys and it, so I think the biggest fear is scripts as you guys can see I never ever not use my script for the intro right because I don't want to screw up 
because that's where I'm a perfectionist. But the cool thing is, and, and Katie, I'm sure you're going to show this, is that you can actually copy and paste your script right above where your actual video is. So it's not like you have to memorize it. You can have it right in front of you. And it doesn't even look like you're reading it because you're looking at basically the same place, right? So I don't want to steal your thunder because I know you're going to share some examples and things like that. But these little tips and tricks, I had no idea you could do this for LinkedIn. That's pretty cool as well. So I'm like, right. Should, uh, we, be get, should we be getting into these tricks? Yeah, I know. I'm so, I, I'm like, uh, yes, start, start sharing some examples. Start sharing how you do this. The floor is yours. Uh, Nikki and I will shut up. Yep. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to pop over here. So do we want to just first see how, literally how to use bomb bomb yeah actually yeah if you want to show how simple it is is that your favorite one i know there's a couple right yeah so here's the thing i'll say and so i am agnostic against across all tools i don't have a relationship with anybody whatever people already have is what you should use so like advisors that already use and love loom cool do that i will say the only reason i don't use loom for my video emails is because I have a rule. If something takes more than three steps, I'm not going to do it. Say nothing of all the advisors I work with. You all have 101 things going on. And so with Loom, if you integrate it into your email, I don't know why it's like this, but it will always record your screen, which is ridiculous. So if you only want a video recording, you have to log in, then you have to copy it. You have to go back. You have to paste it. It's just too many steps. Nobody's got time for that. So I'm all about simplicity. So if we go here and I'll show you in Gmail, it works exactly the same in Outlook, but you can see here, see this little record button? As soon as I open a new message, this record button is here. I can move it around wherever I want. So I literally, in the new message, I'm gonna send this to Delzy. We'll send it right through. We're gonna say, hello, hit record. You see the little recorder opens up here. Okay, so we see that I'm here. So we're going to hit record, gives us a three, two, one countdown. Hello, hello. So glad we're here. Awesome. Hit stop. And so this is where a couple things I'll say. I don't ever worry about a thumbnail because you'll see why that doesn't matter. But you can add a video specific call to action. So let's say I'm saying like, hey, Delzy, I just published a book, which I didn't. But you can say get book here. And then you can put a link directly to your book. Or if you're talking to a client and you're like, hey, here's the article we talked about in our meeting, then you can put that there. So just so you see what it looks like, I'll just put a link and then see how it says get book here. So it's just in that video. So we're gonna hit save. See, I haven't left my email or anything. It's just this little pop-up here. And then we get this ridiculous little GIF in here. So that's what it looked like. And it says exactly how long the video is. And so I've tested this a number of different ways. I don't know why, but my sweet spot tends to be like 42 to 47 seconds, which is great. So I'm like, don't do three minute long videos. These are just short videos designed to stay in front of people and build a relationship, right? So this is perfect for before that prospect meeting. Think about people that this gif is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm going to send this to you though, just so you have it, Delzy. Yeah. <laughs> that so way. How did you integrate that in your out? So how would these people, how would we integrate that in our outlook? It's just yeah. your downloading. It's just a, it's just a, in Google, it's a Google plugin in outlook. It's an outlook plugin. Okay. Yep. Like super, super simple. And then and that's the thing. I, I love simplicity. You know, I will say, realize. even if you don't do that, Katie, I did it right from the website. And yeah. all I did was I copied, I said, yes, I want a CTA call to action. Yep. And I literally just put, pasted to an email and, and it was all there. And then at the end, it said schedule or something, whatever the CTA was. And it was right at the end of the video, right in the corner. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so here, so I figured we should look. So this is what it looks like on Delzy's side, right? Again, it's got that, it's got that GIF. So then he literally just clicks on it. I will say I usually actually title the videos or I title the emails like a personal video for you. That way I'll put their name. So personal video for you, Delzy. That way that grabs their attention. But as soon as he clicks on it, then it comes in here, it plays automatically, and then everything is white labeled. 
So this is another really important part is you want it to feel like it's your brand, right? You don't want the bomb branding. You don't want somebody else's branding. And then it makes it nice and easy. So you can go straight to my website. I always have the schedule a call here. That way I just know I don't ever have to think about it. I don't have to manually put it in every time. I'm like, yep, if you want to schedule a call, schedule it up here in the corner, right? So you can have that in addition to the video specific call to action. Just makes it a really it's very easy to get your own branding in that upper mm -hmm. left-hand corner in, in the whole thing. Yep. Yep. So you okay. can choose what contact information you can choose your photo, your logo, even at the bottom, it has bottom at the way bottom left, but otherwise everything else is branded. Cause if clients are clicking on it and then they click, they could be like, where are you taking me? What's happening here? Because people aren't quite used to video emails yet. And in your experience with working with these advisors, there hasn't been any obstacles or restrictions to them doing that Outlook plugin. There's no, no. Right? there's not any reason. That's no. And again, that's what, but talk to your compliance department, always yeah. talk to them so that they know you're doing this. And then that's where they might say, okay, now add it because you can always go into bomb and it shows you every video you've sent. You can also upload videos. So I do this for like my weekly newsletters. I record a video separately. I upload it into bomb just to get that little gif at the beginning because mm -hmm. that grabs people's attention. So I embed that in my weekly newsletter that goes out. Okay. So you can upload videos and then it shows you exactly how many times your video has been played, what percentage of the video has been played, right? So compliance can get that or compliance might say, look, download every video and store it somewhere or whatever. Got it. I'm just, I'm looking at the people on this call and I'm just like, oh my gosh, the characters on this call and what they could do. With these <laughs> every one of them are characters. Okay. I know. I love it. I, it's awesome. This is fantastic. So do you want to share some of your clients and their, I love the ones where they don't look professional. Yep. There's, you're almost <laughs> appalled, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they actually published that. That's the ones I want to see. Yeah. Okay, so I'll change my audio to make sure you guys can hear it. So apologies, as much as I'm big on audio, we're going to have bad audio for a minute. Oh, you're not at home. Yeah. So no. this is an advisor that went to my workshop a year or two ago. Um, Jason McGarrett shared with permission. I'm here on the farm that my father grew up on, about four miles north of Perryton, Texas, and about two miles south of the Oklahoma River. Right here on Highway 83, you'll hear some of that traffic. Um, I have two updates for intentional gratitude, our October contribution, and links to those organizations in the email below. And I'm up here in the Perryton area for another week visiting clients. And I'll give you a quick, and my grandfather, grandmother started building this farm back in the 19, late 1930s, early 1940s. This farm behind me, construction was started, I believe in the late 1930s, early 1940s. And my grandparents would have dances up in the top of that barn. It's got a dance floor at the top of it. And they charge an admission, have a band. How cool is that? Katie, the cool thing is, and they can't hear it because of the, the audio, but if you watch it from your computer, yeah. guys, the wind is 50 miles an hour while he's doing the video. It's hysterical. Like you can hear him clearly, but you can, you know how we all hear the wind in a microphone. Yeah. And Katie, ju just tell us how simple, like what did he use to do it? So all he's got there is, and I will actually tell you, the webcam that I'm using right now is my iPhone. I'm using my iPhone. As, oh. as my webcam. And it's just on my travel selfie stick tripod right now. Cause I'm standing up. I always recommend people stand up. We get better energy when we're standing up. So he's just using his iPhone and his selfie stick. Funny thing is he knows he should have his lav mic, which is this little thing right here that will yeah. cover all of the wind. Um, but guess what? He didn't have it with him that day. And just from the little bit that we saw, he sent an update to his clients on the quarterly contribution that they make to charity. So Delsey, there are so many great things in this video. And that's why I wanted to highlight it because it's giving valuable information to clients while also getting to know him better in a way that like, I'm never going to forget that story in that barn. I, I remember when I started my show with Coffee with Delzy, I, I couldn't get started because I was a perfectionist and I was like, everything had to be perfect. And this gentleman who helped me, he just said, Delzy, you just got to do it. And the clients you have who love horses, I could see him just doing a quick video of showing the golf course and going, oh, look at me. Just wanted to give you an update on where I am, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Simple as that, right? 
it, it absolutely is. And I always recommend people do that because here's the thing, advisors, and I work with all of them on getting their office set up, right? And their lighting and their audio and everything. And then I tell them to go outside because having that change of scenery, right? If you work with people, your clients love golfing, they see a video of you on the golf course, they're going to click and watch. That's going to be like, okay, which course is he at? How did he do that day? Or I was there with him. It's, you know, so many more visual cues that engage our brain rather than always just being in the office. So this is where having a very clear target audience is absolutely imperative for doing video. Emails I could see being useful, right? Scheduling, wishing happy birthday. Is there anything else like longer videos or, or is this more just short and sweet, get to the point? What are other uses? Yep. So I def definitely say having videos on your website. I think we all need to do a better job at, in all areas of our life of putting ourselves in the other person's shoes. And so think about being a prospect that's evaluating multiple advisors. And I've done a hundred presentations on this and I just randomly go and grab five advisor websites. They all look the same. They all sound the same. Everybody is fabulous in their very nice suit saying where they went to university, what credentials they have, how many pets they have, right? Like how on earth are you going to make a decision between these? And so video, again, is the number one way to stand out. You want people to connect with who you are. This is a long-term relationship and it is a relationship. So having video on your website is huge. And so this is one we just did. Sharice is fabulous. She works with advisors. She just went through our recent workshop. And in our workshops, we actually edit a few videos for you because that's always a big challenge. We do your YouTube thumbnails and banner. So we just check out a few seconds of her. Hi, my name is Sharice Spiller. I am the founder and principal consultant of Level Best. Level Best is an operations and process strategy consulting firm exclusively for financial advisors. So what does this mean? We give business owners the peace of mind with knowing they have a streamlined operations in four easy steps. Step one, we part. So having that clear, what is your process? Who do you work with? How do you work with them? And then we always try to, when we get into these videos, this is, it's still pretty easy and authentic for stuff like this. You do want it stepped up a little, having some of those visual cues, those text highlights to keep your attention, some B-roll or images so that it's not just a pure talking head video for three months, three minutes. We want to really highlight the value that you're bringing. What are the mistakes that advisors make with lighting and stuff? Obviously this is professionally done, right? Jeez. If not entirely professionally done, is just through going through my workshop. Again, we work with advisors to say, okay, what is your framing? What is your, the three biggest mistakes, Delzi, and I see this on even Zoom calls all the time, is audio, right? So even though we're talking about video, you have to have good audio. And I will tell you that like AirPods, if I put mine back in, the sound is atrocious. And think about the conversations you're having with clients, right? These can be very emotional. They can be volatile, right? People are scared. Can they retire? What's going on? Maybe they lost a spouse. You want to make sure that people are fully engaged, even in your virtual meetings. And so you have to have good audio. So we work on that. And then lighting, I crack up how often I get on calls with advisors and this is all, this is hundred percent natural lighting. I'm just in front of a big, beautiful window right now. So natural lighting is the best, but advisors will have a huge window behind them. You can't see them. Like, how do you build a relationship with just like a blob of a person? So you want to make sure that there aren't any distractions in your video or virtual meetings that are causing your clients or prospects to not really be able to grasp your message or who you are. And then the last thing is around framing. And this was endlessly comical during the pandemic, especially you all love your ceilings. Everybody has video and it's 70% ceiling and you're like hiding down here and we're trying to check out the top of your head. Don't Nicole, understand it. Nicole. Am I, is that me? You're looking down at the camera. I know. I don't have my normal setup. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hold uh -oh. that camera down. I'm like down here. <laughs> what I always tell people, two things. One, here's the easiest way to remember it. You should always, and Nicole is doing this, you should always have more room below your chin than above your head. 
That's the easiest thing to remember. Because what we're really trying to do here is we're trying to mimic what it feels like to be in person, right? So we also don't want to be really close to the camera because we all know those people in person. You're like, whoa, step back. So we want to see like the top of your body, a little bit of your shoulders and your chest and see some hand gestures because that's what you would see if you're out to coffee with a client, if you're sitting in a meeting or a conference room. So we want to emulate what that feels like as much as possible in video. Nicole, do you see this as almost being like a, a professional like TikTok or Instagram, like where you're- What came to my mind and I don't use it, but I have a lot of girlfriends that do. I was like, this is professional Snapchat. Yes. Is this Snapchat? Is this what the kids are doing these days? <laughs> we should say the professionals are doing these days, right? Yeah, now the professional. <laughs> yeah, professional. that's what it is. You literally can see it these is advisors having fun with this, with their existing Seriously? clients being at a golf outing or something or whatever. I, yeah. I always feel like it's an elevated, what came to my mind initially was it feels like an elevated handwritten th- note. Like that feels so good to get like a handwritten note and it's memorable sometimes, but truthfully, that's a lot of work. And I'm not saying this should replace handwritten notes, but I think in a lot of areas, this is 10 times easier. And I would almost argue more impactful. The other thing is technically anybody could do a handwritten note for you. And they do. (laughs) Yeah. There are companies that you can hire, which is why having that personal, Hey, Nicole, happy birthday. Oh my gosh. It was so great seeing you last week. I hope you had so much fun doing the big event you were playing. That's different. Okay. The mobile portion of this, is it it just as easy? Like being on the go? Well, yeah. So if you're like, if you're in your Google app or on Outlook, can, I don't know if you have, you might have to use the website, right? So like doing bomb bomb videos. Yeah. When I do it, I honestly, I rarely do it on my phone, but I guess I go into the bomb bomb app on the phone and then I do copy from there into an email. But you, like, if you're out at a golf course or something, can you take like a video Can you do that, or do you just do a video and you can put it in the bomb bomb? I don't, is that? Yeah. So I would, because you're like, I would recommend you just record the video, but you don't send it right then because this is the other challenges. You also don't want to be the person that's, oh my gosh, every time we're on a golf course, you have to stop on the fourth hole. And now you're composing an email and you're sending it to everybody. Like you don't want to be a pain. You need to still enjoy life. So record the video. And then when you're back at the office later that day or the next day, then you can send it out. Yeah. But that's what I meant. But you can yep. take an iPhone video and. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing. I feel like I upload all of mine for my weekly newsletters and everything. And I will do just a little plug because it's helpful. If you're all not connected with me on LinkedIn yet, follow me on LinkedIn. Almost every day I'm posting questions that I get from advisors and I'm posting the question, the answer naturally in video form. And a lot of the times I'm like, I recorded 10 videos last week when I was walking around downtown Seattle. I just would walk a block, think of a question because I have 700 in my brain just like you all do from questions that your clients and prospects ask you. And all I had, exact same setup here. I just had my phone, my lavalier mic, and my selfie stick. The lighting wasn't perfect. The audio wasn't perfect. But I do that on purpose to continually highlight to advisors that, guess what? You're all remembering them, just like your clients and prospects will remember seeing your videos. Nicole, if we don't do this, we're we're just... Okay, tell us about your program and what you do yeah. for advisors. Walk us through what's the process. I think you said it's 12 weeks long. So the website is advisorvm.com and then just this workshops tab. So yeah, it's 12 weeks. The only reason I break them up is because I really want to emphasize, like we talked about in the beginning, you've got to get the foundation down first. And Nicole, when you were introducing me in the beginning, so yes, I started one of the first completely virtual monthly subscription financial planning businesses back in 2013. I was using video in my business then, and I actually, I had no AUM, I never sold a product, and I was doing modular financial planning rather than doing a whole financial planner one, taking it actually like month by month with different topics. So that's actually how I do video is all the same process. So focusing on all the foundational things, you can see very detailed what we go through every single week. This is all on the website. And you just have a one to two minute video because doing it is the hardest part. 
But every single time I run one of these, I am so amazed. My team is amazed at the huge progress people make. So we just focus on getting comfortable, going through that. I walk you through some editing, Delzi using Descript, get you outside with a change of scenery. We talk about your content plan. And then we go straight into the second six weeks, which is really around marketing. And marketing also means communicating with your existing clients. So I have some people that are like, nope, I don't even want to build my business. I just want to be more proactive in communicating with clients. So we see this all the time, right? Like when the FDIC stepped in and those banks collapsed, like all the advisors in my workshop that Monday morning, they're like, I've got to get videos out to my clients. Brilliant. Because guess what? Your clients are wondering what's going on. And it was such an amazing opportunity. Like when is the last time before that a client asked you about FDIC insurance and are their accounts protected? That's just one of those things that doesn't really come up. So it was a brilliant opportunity to say, look, here are my thoughts as your advisor. Your accounts are okay. This is the work that we're doing. We're keeping an eye on it and being proactive. Same thing with any market downturn, wars, interest rates, all the things that happen. Video is so great for being proactive instead of reactive. So we dive into all of that. Lots of people want to start YouTube channels. Again, compliance, we can still work with them on this. And even if you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to be a YouTube celebrity. That's okay. YouTube is still so great for your SEO, for search. Everybody knows if you're going to look for an advisor, you're going to go see what they're doing online. So if you've got that YouTube channel, and then also just think of it as a library, right? If you've got videos that aren't one-to-one, -one, then YouTube is just a great library. So we go through all that. Again, we keep the workshop super small. Everybody gets very personal attention. You have full access to me throughout. But in those small groups, you've got that camaraderie. You're learning from other advisors. What are they doing? What's working? You've got that accountability every week with meeting for an hour a week, doing the homework, moving things through. Like I said, you get included professionally edited videos, YouTube thumbnails, banners. Delzi, it's a ton of fun. <laughs> this is a lot. And for 1875, wow, that's pretty good. Wow. It's really good, actually. Yeah. Um, Everybody can tell me to raise it, I will say, but I'm like, look, I want this to be accessible to everyone because it's just that important. Did we hit on all the tools that you wanted to cover in our conversation? What are some of the other tools that are easy entry points for our colleagues on the line? Yeah. So a couple of other tools. So bomb bomb was a big one. Descript, I would say we don't have enough time to go into that. That's a whole other okay. thing. But I will say Descript is just, it is the easiest way to edit because one of the challenges people are like, oh yeah, I record on my phone on the golf course, but there's that really awkward beginning of me reaching to hit the record button. And then I looked away or whatever. And so just makes editing super, super easy. It's great for getting those transcripts for sending to compliance. Once you know how to use it, like everything, it's super easy. So I do that for just some of my short and sweet social media videos. Otherwise I've got my editing team to do stuff. So that one's great. I will say one more quick example. I won't play it, but for those people that you're like, hey, but I've been doing blogs. I love doing blogs. Cool. One of my like rock star workshop participants, Elliot Apple, he does these like hits this level blogs. Look, this is the, this is one blog that he does going through the whole thing, all this just incredible detail. And he goes through and he also records a YouTube video. So this video, I think it's 20 minutes long. So some of you are like, can I do a long video? I'm very, I have all this detail. You can. So I just want to say, this is the cool thing about video is it stretches across so many use cases, so many different ways, whatever works for you can absolutely work. And then Delzi, I know we wanted to touch very quickly on um, AI. Should we do that in? Yeah. Katie, yes. Can you touch on AI? Right? Oh, you... yes. So for those of you that haven't used AI, like, there are just so many cool things you can do. I was trying to change the screen I was sharing, but it was already on it. So you can see that now. So ChatGPT, we know, is the most popular. I'm going to show you another tool in just a second as well. But this is where advisors, you get nervous and you're like, oh, what am I going to talk about? How do I make it relevant to my ideal client? So I had a call with a guy yesterday who they're building out a whole niche just in working with fly fisher people, like in Colorado. And so we were talking about all this. So I went ahead and let's say we're in chat GPT. I'm like, all right, write a 90 second the talking head just literally means the video is of a talking head. It's not an animated video. It's not a voiceover. It's you on camera. 
So I'm telling ChatGPT, write a 90 second talking head video script. I am a financial advisor that works with fly fisher people. The video should be about rising interest rates with three key points and analogies they'd understand. So let's just see what it does. I'm going to be super simple here. So this is, if for people who haven't used it, this is literally how fast ChatGPT creates stuff. So now I have no idea what it came up with, but I love this. Camera shows a financial advisor, an enthusiastic fly fisher person standing by a beautiful river backdrop. Advisor, I have to say, I love that ChatGPT always says smiling. That's what I teach in my very first week. We know first impressions are important and last impressions are important. So you should, unless you're talking about a serious subject, you should start and end every video with a smile. That's going to be memorable. And ChatGPT even reminds you, smile. Welcome, fellow fly fisher people. So you're identifying your target audience right up front. You're being encouraging. I'm thrilled to be here. Rising interest rate, just like the currents in this river, interest rates have their ebb and flow and understand their impact is crucial. How cool is that? So again, I'm not going into like super detail here, but like the water level of borrowing costs. So it's totally engaging your target audience in a way that it's going to stick in their brains. It's so much more visually appealing than just blandly sharing a chart from the Federal Reserve about the history of interest rates. Forgive me, but terribly boring. So this is the way you can really make it more interesting. And it'll just give you some ideas. And you'll see things that aren't perfect that you're going to need to change. But this can help with some of those ideas. So if you're like, all right, I know who my target audience is. I know uh, all my clients keep talking about interest rates. Cool. Ask ChatGPT what you should do with that. And then we can be like, we can say, great. Now create five more topics for my ideal clients. Let's just see what it comes up with. Absolutely. It's giving us a whole big thing. Reeling in retirement, right? Building a strong financial yet, just like we cast our fishing nets strategically to catch the best fish. Let's explore how to build a robust retirement plan. If you get stuck with ideas and you get all up in your head, we're all perfectionists, right? We all have analysis paralysis. Using different AI tools can help just flesh that out and give you those initial ideas and give you that initial script and outline that you can then tweak and make sure that it's in your voice. Katie, you know what's so cool about this while you're doing this is I'm pretty good with the iPhone is that there's two apps that one, if you don't want to buy the script because it's a, it's a subscription-based software. And I don't think most of the folks on this call are going to do long-winded like videos like this, right? I have to go and use the script to edit this video, okay? Right. You can just use iMovie. Yeah. And iMovie is fantastic. I mean, it is so simple. I went to the Army-Navy game last year. I'm like, you know what? I'm posting this to LinkedIn. And it was too long, obviously, because I was showing the, the cadets all running in, whatever, and the helicopters and the Air Force and the, the, the fighter planes coming in. And it's a long video, right? So I cut it up into 30 seconds and posted it to LinkedIn. And I yeah. did it all through iMovie. Yeah. Here's another little secret that I, I learned from Dave Zauer, who has a huge YouTube video. He's a huge, yeah. Advisor. Always start your video with a five-second smile and always end your video with a five-second smile then you're not worried about editing and trying to like, I'm touching the phone and you see all that. So those are little secrets that I've learned. And then the last thing is there's an actual app, like this story of the fly, I fly fish. So I'm a fly fisherman. Oh, there you go. So I'm like loving these analogies. But if you think about it, like, how am I going to memorize this story? Guys, yeah. there's an app on your phone that you can literally have a prompter showing the words across your screen while you're doing the video. So yep. if you have a script, you can do that as What's well. That you, I got, big Voo, Big Voo is a big one. Big what Voo is it, is it called? B-I-G-V-U. B-I-G. V-U. V -V -V is in video. I don't think I have Big View. I have, oh, I, it's somewhere on my phone. I got a, it's pretty There, good. there are lots the of them. Store. Yeah, there's a ton of them. Big View. Yeah. B-I-G-V. There it is. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the one. Yep. yep. Yeah, this thing is awesome. And it'll read you your script. And it'll look uh -huh. like you're looking at the camera. And you could be standing in front of that river doing the video. Just little secrets to making video and how easy it really can be. My gosh, we're almost, I can't believe we just went an hour. That felt like. Right? That was good stuff, though. This is very actionable stuff.
That's what I loved about this. I feel like what you just shared with us is very like, this is going to be powerful stuff if you take advantage of it. But it, I don't think the lift to do this is all that much. No, it's like, not. The last question, right, Delzy? Like, what? what's the one thing if these guys and gals want to get started in their practice? What's the one thing that you would recommend where they start? Starting with those gratitude videos or any kind of one-to-one -one video. So this is where if you're in a bigger practice, just start with each other right? Send videos to each other, but I would encourage you, you've got to get it out there because that's when you're really going to get the feedback and see how much people loved your video, how much it stood out. So once you talk to compliance, if you can do it, go send a happy birthday message, send a video to a client that you just haven't heard from in a while. People sometimes do this with like their C and D clients as a way of just staying in touch. You don't really want to do full meetings, but you're like, Hey, just want you to know that I'm here. Let me know if you have any questions, just a really nice, easy touch point. So awesome. So I'm going to close it with this. Katie, thank you. This was absolutely fantastic. I can't, this, you were an unbelievable guest. So I certainly appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nikki, for your time as well. And Katie, I hope everything goes well out there. Yeah. I know why you're out there. So God bless thank you. you. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Thank, thank you all. Bye-bye.